Hello friend, this is Jim O'Rear. Welcome back to Jim O'Rear's Wacky World. Now, I know a lot of you know me from the indie horror film world with uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of indie horror films that I've produced and written and acted in and things like that. So it's no surprise that I love indie horror films. So the team behind the indie film Cold Blows the Wind contacted me and sent me a screener of their film, Cold Blows the Wind, to take a look at. And uh, I thought I would tell you a little bit about this movie in case you haven't heard of it. Now, um, basic, the basic synopsis is that there is a couple that are driving home from a birthday party and they run over a jogger. They put the jogger in their car to try and go ditch the body and find out the jogger is still alive. Well, they kind of hole up in this uh, remote house in the woods, and then some more creepy people start to stop by, which heightens the mystery and tension that is already going on surrounding this. Now, I'm not gonna say a whole lot more about the plot than that, because I don't wanna give away spoilers and things like that, because uh, you know, if you wanna see this film, I want you to, to be intrigued and surprised as the mystery unfolds. But what I can say is it's kind of a, uh, it, it has the vibe and mixture of uh, like Pet Cemetery meets The Hidden meets The Evil Dead. And it's got that kind of feel and sensibility to it. Now, um, when I look at an indie film, there are two main things that are the first things that I look for. Is there good lighting? And is there good sound? Those are two of the main things that just really send an indie film into the dumpster quickly, is if you don't have good lighting and you don't have good sound. This has both. The sound is very clear. You can hear all the dialogue clearly. Um, the, the lighting is fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of throwback to sort of the early John Carpenter ways of lighting with sort of the, the, the very harsh blues and reds that are mixed throughout. Uh, and it very much has that old carpenter type look in the lighting. And, um, and there's some really beautiful lighting in this, uh, especially in some of the outdoor scenes. Uh, you can see everything really, really well. Um, now, as with any indie film, the performances are a little uneven, but there again, you know, this is an indie film. They're working with limited resources. And the actors in these films are not those actors that have been paid millions and millions of dollars throughout their career to make their craft better. The only way they can do this is by acting in more productions to build up that, uh, you know, that, that experience and get better and better. And while the performances are a little uneven, they're not bad. They're not bad at, at all. Um, everybody is um, uh, holds their weight in this very well. Um, now, the characters themselves, though, none of the characters in this have any redeeming qualities at all. And with that, it sort of feels like a Tarantino film. And that may turn off some people that don't like Tarantino. You know, he always works with characters that are in the gray area. And all of the characters in this film are very much in a gray area. Uh, the cinematography in it, really well done. Uh, the, it, it's very claustrophobic though. It is very claustrophobic. The, the movie hardly opens up to breathe at all in some of the shots. Uh, it does open up slightly at times when they're outdoors to let it breathe, but it is very claustrophobic. And not that it's a bad thing because one of my favorite films is the original Night of the Living Dead. It's a very claustrophobic film. It's basically one location, limited characters. And those characters in Night of the Living Dead, just like this one, Cold Blows the Wind, uh, really the humans are worse than the evil that they are battling in this movie. Um, so it does sort of have that, uh, that, that, that feel and, and, and look of, of being very claustrophobic. Um, the, uh, the filmmakers were wise and they understand that in something like this that has limited locations and limited actors, 
the locations you choose need to also be characters. In a lot of indie films, you see a lot of characters speaking in an apartment in a blank white wall, you know, or something really boring like that. The sets and locations they've chosen for this are not boring at all. The, the house they're in becomes a character. The woods they are, they're in become a character. And that really uh, helps add to it. There is some dark humor thrown about in it. And I'm a big fan of dark humor, especially when some of the characters are trying to figure out how to chop up a body and the best way to chop up a body. And, um, and that body chopping is also one of the more disturbing images in the film. It's, uh, it, it's kind of gross. Um, now, it, it, uh, you know, it, like any in indie film and really even major budget films, it's not perfect. It has, uh, you know, it has some, uh, some things here and there. The, the sound effects, some of the sound effects used in it are way too far over the top. You know, they're doing a decapitation and it sounds like a 100 year old oak tree snapping in half. A little over the top, there's a character that vomits and it doesn't sound like she's vomiting. It sounds like that she's being mauled by a lion. Um, <laughs> so those are a little much and a little over the top. And, um, and of course there are some, some gaps as far as uh, continuity and shots that, you know, you, you would have thought they would have looked a little closer at. There are times where you can see the actors wearing the battery packs and transmitters for the microphones under their shirts that really stand, you know, stick out. And you can see the box and the wires and the antenna. Um, the, uh, the continuity as far as, as blood, like on the shirt, the blood moves around in different shots. So it's not always in the same place. Um, so there are those things. And, uh, you know, but you even see those in big budget films. But overall, this movie, Cold Blows the Wind, um, it's intriguing. It is interesting from the start. Uh, it holds your attention. It, uh, it builds the tension and the mystery as it goes along. And it's a really fun film. So if you're looking for a fun little indie film that has those sort of 80 vibes of, of Pet Cemetery and Evil Dead and things like that, you might want to look for Cold Blows the Wind. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, click that like button to let the powers that be know that you like the video. And while you're at it, click on follow or subscribe, and you'll be notified when I upload new videos. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.